Wang Wei explored natural environments without dichotomies, categories, justification, or explanation. Influenced by the Taoist concept of Wu Wei, his few surviving paintings sought the clarity of water and mist with black ink. Well over a thousand years ago, he wrote, "The sky has cleared, and there is a vast plain, and as far as the eye can see, no dust in the air. Only science can catch the invisible dust. Each breath vacuums seventy thousand solid particles. Even a clean country breath sucks in over half this amount. Not one of them is a Rossikov particle." Elementary dust, enabling consciousness. This solid surface is a veil of dust, once the finest stuff visible in sunlight, and scum, on its algae, growing deep, releasing oxygen, the filaments becoming buoyant. Amato notes, mothered by the same earth, dust and dirt have different fathers. Dust, finer and more discreet, belongs as much to air as to earth. Here on earth, dust comes from everything under the sun: minerals, seeds, pollen, insects, moles, lichens, and even bacteria. Its sources also include bone, hair, hide, feather, skin, blood, and excrement. Did you know that Tenochtitlan, which Cortes raised, is buried under thirty feet of wind-blown detritus, some of which is made of spiders' legs? I began thinking about how the essential truths of my people, held within our land and with the knowledge of country, and two questions arose. How far would we, as Aboriginal people, go to survive? What is the future of the planet? I ended up writing the Swan Book, wondering about how their universally felt beauty shone through the ages in poetry and epic stories. I felt the joy and wonder of their existence by being in their presence in times of extreme drought and rain, and in different parts of the world, while also feeling the sadness of how their fate. Has become tied to ours, with the growing emergency of man-made climate change. The swan offers an image of something incorruptible amid the dust.